Okay, the session today is around the structure of the conceptual model. And uh, we will describe the conceptual model based on the concepts that we have in there. The first thing that we need to consider about, think about is, what is a business concept? Because what's contained in the conceptual model is concepts. So a business concept is a term that we use to describe or represent an area of knowledge of the business. For example, arrangement, involved party, event, and so on. The other thing we need to think about is the fact that these concepts are organized in hierar hierarchies. Okay? It's broken down into concept, the type of the concept, the values of that type, and so on. Then also we have to think about that the core concept will be the top of the hierarchy. So the, the model is broken down in the parent, the core concept, involved party, which is broken down in the types. It has values, those values broken down into types, and so on. So the other hierarchy we have to talk about is the classification hierarchy or the classifier. What is a classifier? So a classifier defines the way the business concept can be classified. So we can consider things like um, an involved party, which is an individual, can be classified by gender, male or female. It also defines the subset of the classified business concepts. So what this means is we can have a concept, we can classify it in a certain way, we can take those values, the way it's classified, and classify those even further. If I can use an example, say we take an individual which is married, okay, so we will say the marital status, which is a classifier, could have the value married, not married. The married part of this classifier can have several values, because we can be married in certain ways, with the antinatural contract and so on. So we can have a married type which is then classified even further. So this classifier classifies the concepts and it will go down in the hierarchy as far as we need to go. But remember, it has to make sense. We just don't classify these things until we don't know where to go any further. It must make sense for the business. So we have to be sensible when we do this. The other thing that we have to think about is our descriptive property. Remember these things, since it's a hierarchical model, we, we store the hierarchies in terms of what it contains. So the descriptive properties tells us what is the characteristics of this concept. For example, a name, a birth date, an initial, a surname, and so on. And as it is with any conceptual um, hierarchical model, excuse me, we can actually take this descriptive properties and classify them e even further. So what I want to show you, I'm going to go to the whiteboard and I'm going to draw you an hierarchical schema of how these classifiers actually work. So let's consider the concept involved party. And I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to write involved party. Okay, the first thing we can say is this is a concept. Okay, the concept hierarchy has certain values. So we can type this involved party concept. So we can create a classifier, we call it involved party, I will just use the abbreviation IP, involved party type. And this itself can have several values again. We can have involved party type as being an individual, or can be an organization, I'll just abbreviate that. What we can do is we can classify individuals even further, say by gender. So we can call it gender type. And we can classify gender as being male or female. Okay. If we see we can classify female even further, we will continue in this way. So when we look at the hierarchical model, we have the scenario where we have a concept, which then has a classifier, which then has a value, which again can have a classifier, and a value. And we will go down this road until we cannot classify it even further. That way we build up our conceptual model. Okay, so when we talk about these hierarchies, let's talk about the, con the concept hierarchy. The first thing that the concept hierarchy tells us is what is the concept. It 
describes the concepts in itself. It describes how the concept can be broken down in each of its subtypes. And it contains the classified data specific to that subtype. Okay, and obviously a subtype can have subtypes. The same way goes with our concept hierarchy that describes what it has. That's the descriptors, okay? So a concept can have a name, can have a surname, if it's an individual, can have an effective date, can have an end date, if it's an arrangement, and so on. And each property is distinguished by a descriptor type. For example, we have an involved party. Involved party has a name, but we can have different names. So we can type the names. We can have it first name, middle name, or last name. So we can type all the objects within our concept hierarchy. And the last thing is we talk about concepts, what it can do. Okay, that defines the relationship these concept has with one another. So how this concept relate to another concept. For example, an involved party can have an arrangement. An involved party is living at a location, for example. Okay, and all of these relationships must have a type. In the same as, as I showed on the whiteboard, we will take these, we will classify them, we will give it values. If you can classify it even further, we will continue and go down the line and do that. So it's very important then to understand how we built this hierarchical model. And it's all based in classifications. Okay. So the classification model then represents business information in hierarchical terms. It's not connected with business rules. Think about it. If you have an involved party which has a marital status type being married, there's no business rule contained within that. It doesn't describe any rules around how the business should be conducted. It just purely says we have a concept which is an individual which is married in a certain way. That's all it tells us. The other thing that is um, important in the classification model, and one of the benefits, is it's an excellent model for communication. Everybody can understand it. It's in text, it's not a complicated diagram. The definitions is all in English, which is nice business terms, business-like. So it's an ex excellent way to communicate these concepts, definitions, and, and so on to business. It's also implementation independent. Once again, if I can use the marital status um, for an involved party as an example, it doesn't care about the implementation. It doesn't care whether we're implement, implementing a CRM system or a product management system or a data warehouse. An involved party is married in a certain way and that's all it tells us. And then obviously it's also independent of application and implementation. Whatever application we build, whatever implementation we do, it doesn't really care about that. Okay, so just to, to recap, we have classification hierarchies for classifications, for descriptors and relationships. And at this point, I would like to take the opportunity to actually go through M1 and show you how these things look like in the tool. Okay, so as, we, as you can see in the tool, we have on the left side here, we have all our concepts. We have arrangement, business direction item, condition, classification, invent, and so on. And each of those lines represents the hierarchies. So here we have our concept hierarchy. If I can just contract and expand it once. It's our arrangement concept with its hierarchy. It's how arrangement is classified. For example, we have arrangement type, arrangement structure, arrangement reason, arrangement purpose, arrangement participation. And as I explained before, we can take an arrangement and we can classify it. And we will classify them until we can't classify them anymore or until it doesn't make sense to do so. So if we, for example, look at arrangement type, I'm going to expand this one. We can see it's subtype in three different arrangement types. That can even be classified even further into involved party arrangement type. And if we expand those, it has values. You can see at this level, there's only asset securitization arrangement which has a further classification. There was no point in classifying organization arrangement even further. However, if we can, we will do so. We will create a new um, classification hierarchy called organization arrangement type and we will provide it its values. So let's look, look at asset securitization arrangement that can be expanded further into securitization type can be ex expanded, and we say we have traditional and synthetic um, 
securitization. So this is the way the concept hierarchy work. When we have a look at our descriptive hierarchy, we have arrangement descriptor, and obviously, like I said before, it must have a descriptor type, and this is all the descriptors that we have. Here, for example, we have arrangement date, which can be broken down into different types of dates. So once again, it's concept, classification, concept, classification, and so on. So we have the arrangement date type. Here we go into arrangement lifecycle status date. It has a financial status date and an AM, AML monitoring date. And we can go through the list. There are many, many more of these descriptive properties within the descriptive hierarchy. And then the last one we can go through is our arrangement relationship type. So once again, we have our concept, we have the classifier, and then we have the values. So for example, here we can have arrangement to product relationship, which is a type of arrangement relationship type. We can expand that even further into product arrangement relationship types. We can open that up and we can have a look at the values. For example, arrangement is based on product or arrangement invest in product. So in, in summary, the conceptual model is based in a hierarchical structure and it has three main hierarchies. It has the concept, concept hierarchy, it has the relationship hierarchy, and it has the descriptive hierarchy.